This takes us back to our second option, what we call a grid forming converter. By implementing a different control philosophy, we have converters that are able to synchronize by themselves to their own internal reference, which makes them well suited to weaker grids. If we want to, we can also design these converters and program their controls to emulate the inertial response of a synchronous generator, as we do in our traditional power systems. So in terms of definitions of a grid forming converter, we can look at our own local uh, voluntary specification from the Australian energy market operator. At this stage, most of the grid forming uh, definitions are voluntary. For example, the one that is used uh, here in Australia from the Australian energy market operator that defines a grid forming inverter as one that is capable of maintaining a constant internal voltage for a short time following any disturbance that occurs to the grid. We have this control structure that at its core is able to provide frequency and inertial response. As it does not require an external grid to synchronize to, it is capable of establishing its own local grid and maintain grid synchronization even as the last synchronous connection. We can also consider additional capabilities should available headroom or energy buffer be available and achieve black star capabilities from power electronics converters, something that we could not do with previous uh, generations. In a grid forming converter, synchronization is based on the active power flow out of the converter. The basic principles are very similar to that of a rotating synchronous generator that we have operating in our system for a long time. When the load power exceeds generation, then the frequency of the system will drop, and in that case we're going to have a response from the inverter that follows the droop equations. The frequency is then generated internally based on the above principles, the integration of the frequency gives us the angle, and this angle is what we use to synchronize our converter to. We can introduce more complex forms of grid forming converters that are able to emulate the characteristics of a synchronous generator that include damping, excitation, or any other uh, controller that we have in a synchronous generator. In terms of uh, primary control methods introduced in a grid forming converter, we can look at our traditional droop control, but we can also see virtual synchronous generators, virtual oscillators, and so on. The one that we see more promising in the implementation on a power system is that of the Virtual Synchronous Generator, or VSG. This one allows us to emulate the performance of synchronous generators from a power electronics converter. This also allows us to provide synthetic inertia, which can be regulated and controlled, something that we cannot do with a traditional synchronous generator. And of course, in the literature, we can have many options for which we can actually implement the different control loops that allow us to get a converter to operate as a grid-forming converter. Now, if we are to compare a grid forming and a grid following converter, we see fundamental differences in three aspects. Firstly, we see that with the provision of inertia, as we are able to control the inertial response of a grid forming converter. The fact that the converter also synchronizes to its own reference allows us to improve the system strength capabilities of this converter. Uh, finally, because again of the self synchronization of the converter, we're able to offer black start capabilities, something that is uh, certainly not possible to do with a traditional grid following converter.